Hey, welcome back to the channel, my fellow weather junkies. I'm your host, Craig Majeski, your personal weatherman, bringing you the weather without all that social media hype here on your Friday, November 8th, 2024. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we're tracking here for today as we're expecting some more Colorado snows. Boy, they get dumped on there in New Mexico, especially yesterday. Starting to shift a little bit further to the north for today. Raphael, stronger again, believe it or not. We'll explain why and we'll show the future of this storm, which looks like it's gonna wash itself out in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. And then we're gonna talk about the potential for next week, still looking at a potential for some severe weather as we head toward the middle of next week. We'll get into the specifics on that as well. Now, if you're new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed, I'd like to extend my personal invitation out to you. Please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And if you enjoyed this report, please, as always, leave a, leave a comment down below. Give me a thumbs up. It truly does help with the YouTube algorithm. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our current satellite imagery. Of course, here's our big hurricane down here at Raphael. Winds are up to back up to 120 miles per hour as it continues to move off toward the west. Here's our upper level low feature here that's continued to drop some very heavy rains across portions of Kansas down to Oklahoma and Texas for today. And still seeing the snows on the backside of this. A lot of this is snow here across portions of Colorado. And we got another storm system here off the west coast right now, but not looking too bad up inside both coasts, west coast and east coast looking pretty quiet here for this morning. So here's our big storm system here in the middle of the country. Could see a few severe thunderstorms here across portions of middle Texas, say around Dallas down towards San Antonio for today. We'll show you the specific areas on that here in just a second. Chilly out in the west, uh, fairly mild here in, in the east. And uh, I really see the above normal temperatures really continuing here. Uh, and I was seeing some stuff out on social media saying a big, big push of cool air coming down to the middle, the middle of the month. I'm still not seeing it. I favor the European model on this one. All right, as far as our watches and warnings are concerned, uh, dry conditions in the northeast. That's where we get the red flag warnings up there. Got some fog across areas of the Carolinas down to Georgia today. Flash flooding, still a problem here across portions of Oklahoma and, and Texas with that rain slowly moving on. And obviously, the winter storm is still uh, well in effect. Even some blizzard warnings there across portions of northeastern portions of New Mexico. Those conditions should improve here uh, later for this afternoon and into tonight. All right, let's look at the Oklahoma radar here for this morning. There's a nice surge of uh, steady rains here coming in, so it's going to make for a wet commute, that's for sure, for Oklahoma City, back over toward Clinton, and just off to the east of Lawton in Wichita Falls with steady rain. A little, little thunder mixed in here as well, but nothing severe, just a plain old heavy downpours, really, that's continued to deluge this area. We'll look at our weather city of the day. We'll go ahead and pick Oklahoma City. Why not? They've got a little bit of a wet commute for their commuters going into work for this morning, but uh, at least not looking too bad. Cloudy skies expected for this afternoon, and we'll see high temperatures basically holding into the upper 70s for highs for today. And hey, if you'd like to have your city as the weather city of the day and you got a good webcam in your area, please go ahead and leave that post down below and I'll consider it for a future broadcast. Let's go ahead and take a look at the latest from the Storms Prediction Center as we take a look at our day one outlook here uh, for today as we go ahead and switch on over as we're looking at just a marginal risk. So what that means is we'll see some gusty winds uh, basically down toward Dallas and getting down toward the San Antonio area just in that that area right there for this afternoon. So not a big deal. We're talking about maybe a few gusty winds, uh, some brief heavy rains and things like that here for today. Let's take a look at the day two outlook. We'll go ahead and continue this out. We'll go out to day two here. And you can see there just a general thunderstorm threat here that's going to be as that system slowly begins to move off toward the east. So we're talking about areas there from Missouri down toward the Gulf Coast here, going down toward uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, and the, the western portions of Kentucky and over toward uh, Tennessee here. Uh, as we head into your Saturday. How about our day three as we go into this upcoming weekend? How's that looking? And generally kind of staying in the same general zone here. So general thunderstorm threat here from portions of Kentucky back down to the Gulf Coast and over toward East Texas. So not really moving all that much off to the east. Still a little bit of ridging of high pressure here. I think uh, kind of keeping that little bit of rain out of the southeast once again. That's been a repeated pattern we've seen a lot here uh, during the fall season. So because of that slowness of that storm system, obviously we get a little bit of concern uh, talking about the rent, the flooding potential. And obviously we had that flooding potential here for today. As you can see that we had those, well, those flash flood watches in effect. This will, may move a little bit further to the east here. You see the slight risk for some heavy rains and some isolated flooding there across Texas and Oklahoma and portions of southern Kansas here expected here for your Friday. And as we go ahead and advance this into your day two, well, let's take a look at that. That'll shift a little bit further off toward the east, obviously, as that system uh, moves a little bit further to the east and as that low pushes up to the north. So we're talking about down Tennessee back toward Louisiana once again. And as far as day three, that's the area of concern for your Saturday. 
And how about our day three? Let's take a look at day three. We'll look at that. And it's just a marginal. Again, that system begins to slowly weaken a lot. So just some heavy rains here going up from the Ohio River Valley, stretching back down to the golf course, sneaking into parts of Georgia and parts of Alabama. They definitely need that rainfall. They at least get a chance of rain for those areas here as we head in through the weekend. So not a washout weekend for the Southeast, but at least the rain threat will be there a little bit. So recapping your severe weather uh, expectation for your day here on Friday, we're talking about San Antonio, Dallas, Austin, Fort Worth, and Arlington, all those areas under a marginal risk for some severe weather expected for this afternoon. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the tropics that shipped on out here. Again, we're just still watching that area disturbed weather out in the uh, Atlantic expected here. Showing about 20% chance for development. We'll see if that's going to hold to fruition or not. And I'm also going to be watching beyond the seven day. We might see something again start to form down here in the Southern Caribbean once again. Uh, we got a little ways to watch that, but that's kind of a hot zone typically, which you see uh, for this time no, you're not unusual. And then obviously we've got Hurricane Raphael we got to talk about here again. So uh, here again, a very uh, organized system. Uh, doesn't You don't have that clear eye there, but you definitely have a nice robust uh, CDO uh, that we're seeing right there, Central Dense Overcast, as it continues to move very slowly. It's been slowing down a bit. Now, it's back up to 120 mile per hour winds, and the reason for that is the sea surface temperatures. They have definitely, uh, it's going over a little warm eddy right through here. So, so the, the temperatures are a little bit warmer, so I had a little burst of strength and back up to 120. I do anticipating that that's about as strong as it's gonna get, and it's gonna start weakening. And then there's going to be another problem for the system as it continues to move. The steering currents on this thing are going to be collapsing. And because it's going to be collapsing here, it's going to really slow down. So it'll hold its own for a little while. And then you notice it does a little loop-de-loop -loop here. Uh, and what it's going to do, because it's slowing down, the rain is going to be falling over the same general area. What, what does the rain do? It cools the water temperatures down. So not only is it going to be cooling its fuel source down a little bit, it's also going to be dealing with some wind shear, and you notice the trend here. It goes from a, basically a, a hurricane back to a tropical storm, and then by the time we get to middle of next week, it's back down to depression. And all the models are generally indicating that this thing's going to start to basically slowly uh, dissipate out as we go into next week. So, looking at the ESANS ensemble model here, you can kind of get, an, get a get a get a general idea of what to expect here. Is it basically it's going to continue to kind of drift a little, little loop to loop, and then kind of uh, kind of go back down this way and then kind of fizzle on out as we go through time. So that's been pretty consistent, uh, really not seeing any big changes with that. Even the American GFS has not been showing a whole lot with that as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at the models data on this. So let's go ahead and take a look at this as we're going to see, uh, again, this thing is going to slowly does weaken as it pushes off toward the east there as we go through the weekend. So it's by the time we get into Sunday morning, uh, it is, is weakened substantially here. I mean, the, the pressure here on the European model dropping it down to about 1,004 millibars at that point. And then as we go into the, the rest of the forecast period, it just kind of meanders there for a little while, and then it just kind of, yeah, it just kind of disappears. Maybe it goes into Texas a little bit, but really it weakens quite a bit as it, it gets stuck there in the Gulf of Mexico. Nothing to push it as the steering currents uh, completely collapse there. Let's look at the GFS model. We'll do that for a comparison here. It kind of generally does the same thing. goes off to the west. Stalls, meanders around just a little bit, uh, and then it just kind of disappears. It goes bye-bye. So again, it looks like we're going to say goodbye to Raphael. Is it just going to die out in the Gulf of Mexico and not impact everybody? Although I will say this much, anybody going to the beaches this weekend, watch out for the river currents because you know that surf is going to be up all up around the Gulf Coast, especially the Florida Panhandle. It's still pretty warm if anybody wants to go to the beaches. Uh, it is definitely going to be a little bit on the rough side with the surf. So just be careful of that. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the overall jet stream I want to really focus on not only the ejection of this current storm system here across the southwest. This is the one that's causing the snows as well as the, the, the rains out in the plains. We're going to be talking about our next system as well as we're going to be seeing some changes. We're still tracking the potential for some active weather in the next week. So as we go through the weekend, this is storm system is going to slowly start to eject out. we got a little bit of an active subtropical jet there, but the main jet here is up toward the north here. So what we're going to be watching is this piece of energy here off the coast. It's going to be diving down to the south. It's still showing uh, what I was mentioning yesterday, a negative tilt to that jet stream. What that means is it could add additional spin to the atmosphere. So as this thing crashes on in going into next week, and as they get into Wednesday morning, you still got a pretty decent jet. Now, this doesn't look as, as pronounced as yesterday, but it's still there. So when you see a belt back tilt like that, that indicates you've got some decent wind shear with this. So we're gonna have the clash of the air masses, and I'm still a little concerned about a potential uh, tornado outbreak uh, in this portion of the country 
as we go in toward Wednesday and into Thursday of next week. So that is my concern right now. Still a little early to call on that, but again, just keep a watch on this as we go into next week. That does weaken and lift on out, and then as we take this all the way out again, we see some big ridging again here across the east. That What that means, warmer temperatures. Again, I was seeing some folks who were posting uh, the GFS, I think, was hitting at some sort of cool down middle of next week. I'm not buying that. I still think we're going to stay pretty much above normal with temperatures here in the east. And uh, still looking at uh, maybe a little below normal here out in the west. you got a little bit of cold air coming in around here uh, going into this upcoming weekend. And then as that jet stream kind of pushes off, we see another decent storm system here in the middle of the country as we go into Sunday. So we're talking about uh, the 17th and going into the 18th here in the middle of the month. Still not seeing a big change here. Still looking at look at as another high pressure system down here again across the southeast. And what that means is we're going to see dry conditions return back to the southeast. They're beginning a little bit of rain, but it looks like it's going to be turning dry there once again as we look at the long term. All right, let's look at the uh, precipitation here. We're going to take this on through again. We're going to watch that storm system here slowly but surely start to move on off out here. Again, we'll watch for a few thunderstorms across Texas here uh, for your Friday that may be marginally severe. Again, we're going to say goodbye to our hurricane out here. It's going to go bye-bye. Uh, some decent chilly air across the northeast. Got a little bit of a little bit of a cool slot there. As you can see the 540 line, that freezing line there uh, up there to the northeast. So as you go on through, this will extend that rain back off toward the east as we'll say goodbye to the what's left of that hurricane. We do get some rains in here uh, going in throughout Sunday across the Ohio River Valley, uh, parts of the southeast getting a little bit of rain here as that system kind of slowly but surely pushes off and decays. So we'll say goodbye to that as it pushes into the northeast going into Monday morning. Well, maybe some a wet commute there for New York City, Philadelphia, the big cities up that way uh, going into Monday. And then we're going to watch this next system out here on the west coast. This is the one that's going to be watching as it dives into the southwest once again. And as it ejects out of the system, we'll see some snows there across. It kind of loses its punch as it typically does as the mountains kind of rob its moisture source. But then as it comes, ejects back out. Now, this is a little further north than what it was showing yesterday. However, I'm still thinking, I'm still watching that area here uh, across Illinois, Missouri, to Arkansas, back to this area right here as we've got the cold air plunging into this. That zone we need to watch for potential severe weather as well as a few isolated tornadoes with it. Again, the good news with this is at least it doesn't look as robust or as strong as it was on yesterday's model run, but that can always change. So, so we get closer. This is pushed off to the east. We get some decent rains here across uh, areas of the south. Look at that, Atlanta, Georgia. Hey, next Thursday, maybe get some decent rains here across the south with this one system. But I think beyond that, we'll see things uh, begin to dry out once again for the southeast once this system goes on by. And it rolls out to the northeast and then uh, looking pretty quiet. Then our next storm system, again, we had that, remember, we had that, that last bit of energy here coming in out of the west uh, as we we're going out toward the end of this model run. So as we go toward th uh, Thursday, Sunday, boom, we get another area of thunderstorms. We're going to watch here in the middle of the country and another active system out here on the west coast once again. So definitely looking at a more progressive weather pattern here across the country starting to take shape. And as a result of this, obviously, we'll keep that rain chances going on. Obviously, we got the flooding, uh, flooding concerns here for today across portions of Texas and Oklahoma and Kansas here uh, with the rain system for today. And as we go ahead and take this out here further, we'll watch that next storm system come on out as we go into Wednesday next week. That storm system that's out in the plains, it's going to produce rains here across the south and across the areas into the mid, into the uh, Ohio River Valley, into the northeast. And then our next storm system, boom, it blows up real quick as we go to Wednesday and Thursday. It's going to bring some more rains there for a big chunk of the east. So looks like we continue here with uh, decent rains here across the east, still dry across the west. And boy, they're getting some mega rains out here on the west coast, at least what we're expecting here over the next 10 days. And uh, boy, we're talking some decent rainfall amounts here. Uh, no, thank you there. So you're looking at uh, anywhere showing five to seven inches of rain there from Oregon and into Washington State over the next 10 days. So very, very rainy out there in the Pacific Northwest, about what you would expect, right? And looking at the snowfall routes again here, I'll be back to this up once again. You see the snow here uh, across uh, areas of Colorado. We'll take this out to Sunday morning, kind of leave it right there. Yeah, about early midnight. It should be done right that time. So you're still looking at out here on the foothills, uh, looking over a foot to uh, maybe 15 inches of, of snow, 12 to 15 inches of snow there from Denver. So uh, traveling out on the foothills, heading on out of Colorado, probably not a good idea, at least uh, going from today and into tomorrow. Once we get past tomorrow, things should begin to improve out there and travel conditions should get a lot better uh, out there. Definitely a heavy, wet snow that they're seeing out there in the Colorado foothills. 
All right, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the temperature anomaly map. This is 850 millibars. We're talking about 5,000 feet. As you can see, the blues and the greens. Obviously, this is where our below normal pocket's been uh, very warm out here in the east and even up here toward the north. Again, we see those reds and the dark kind of white colors. You know, you're seeing above normal temperatures there. So let's go ahead and drag this on through here. Let me get this uh, cue going. Here we go. As you can see this going on, again, we're seeing temperatures staying warm in the east and no big changes there. It does start to warm up in, in the west as well. So by the time we head into Monday, uh, notice the bulk of the country here ooh, looking pretty pretty mild. I, I don't know, okay, I draw a little big circle there. But anyway, let's go ahead and take the sun out. We got another cool pool coming down here in the east. There it goes. And because of the storm system coming out of here, this is what's going to be setting up into Wednesday uh, for that active severe weather. We got the warm air out ahead of it and the cool air uh, uh, behind it. So as we go into Wednesday, you notice that cold front moving here to the east here as we go throughout the day on, on your Wednesday. So with this cold front coming on through, we'll watch for that active severe weather in those zones. Uh, going out through the, throughout the day on your Wednesday, and then this will push off toward the east. But again, I'm not seeing any big cool down. Again, I was seeing out on social media, it's hey, big cool down in the, in the east around the 15th. Well, the European says no, and I'm, I, again, I concur with the European on this one. Uh, I don't, don't see any pattern, major pattern shift taking place just yet. Once again, look at this, back to below normal temperatures out here in the west once again. Very warm here in the east as we head toward the 17th. So uh, no big pattern shift, unfortunately. I know you some folks here in the east were wanting to see some cooler air. Not going to happen. And it uh, uh, looks like we're going to continue to see this stretch of warm weather staying with us here uh, for the next 10 days. Let's check and see what the Climate Prediction Center is saying. Let's see if they concur with what I'm seeing. I kind of agree with this so far. As we continue to see the below normal temperatures in the west, very warm for the eastern two-thirds here. Again, this goes from November 13th through the 17th, and from the 15th to the 21st, still very warm here in the eastern two-thirds of the country, below normal here in the west. Again, I was still going with my prediction. I'm still staying with this. I think by the time we get to the week of Thanksgiving, just knowing what climatologically we should see with these pattern shifts every three to four weeks, I think we'll finally see a change toward the end of the month, but we'll have to wait and see that's going to take place. Only change here on the 6 to 10 day precipitation outlook. Again, we are noticing that ridging here starting to take place again across the southeast as we were going towards, say, around the 15th or so. So as a result of that ridging, we're seeing below normal precipitation here from the mid-Atlantic down to the southeast, but still very active storm track here from California into the middle of the country. And the 8 to 14 day, again, above normal precipitation here across the Rockies and in and out to the plains, but continuing with that, again, with that ridge coming back in across the southeast, as we've kind of seen on and off most of the fall, that's going to continue again as we head toward the 21st. So again, saying with a pretty active weather pattern out there uh, to watch. Uh, hopefully, get rid of that, uh, they get rid of that snowstorm out there out into the Rockies. Had a had a, uh, a fan here post on uh, asking, boy, this one usually gets the kind of snows. And I said, yeah, a, a little bit. Uh, that's for sure. It's been a slow mover. It says normally they get their snow, it hits and runs, and then it's gone. But uh, this one's kind of lingered because it was a cutoff low and it was just kind of being very slow. But it's going to start to move off this weekend. Things in Colorado will begin to improve and we hope to get some of that wet weather out of the southern plains to get them a chance to dry out here just a little bit as well. All right, that's your update for now. And if you haven't taken the time to subscribe to the channel, again, I'm sending my personal invitation to you. Please go ahead and hit that subscribe button to become part of the Weather Nerds family. Hit that notification bell so you learn on future content. And as always, I invite anybody to share this report with anybody they would like to. And again, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below. All right, that's your update for this Friday. You guys take it easy, be good, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.